Welcome to Explicit Materia God Mode, the Shane and Evan talk about video game show. The show where you get the best opinions from the best non-experts around. Sit back and enjoy the show. Welcome, friends, to another episode, episode two of Explicit Materia God Mode. I am your host, Shane Wise, if you didn't already know. And as with me always is Evan, the man, McKee. I don't know. I just made that up. The man. Is that, is that good? Maybe. I don't know. That Maybe works get- for me, man. I am a man, <laughs> so I don't really, I can't argue that much, I guess. Uh, what's new with you, man? I haven't spoken Feels to you in a while. Feels good to be back. Uh, it has been a little bit. It has been a little while. I'm in my master's action, full swing, uh, all that action. Sorry, there's a cat that is just making this... <laughs> Uh, interesting. <laughs> she does. She like has completely left me alone all day. Just no love whatsoever. And now all of a sudden, as soon as it matters, it's just a bunch of attention, <laughs> neediness. Okay. Uh, but no, it's been good. It's been good. I've been playing some fun games uh, here and there. Sometimes I have a lot of free time. These days, I don't have a ton of free time at all. Yeah, uh, I, but I, I feel I you there when I can. I Do you ever you feel like you either like you either have enough money to play video games or enough time to play video games, but never both? Never both. Yeah. Does that feel like it, we can put that down as maybe a hard and fast rule? Well, it's just, you know, being an adult. You know, if well, you have to be an adult, you know, it's like you, get, you, you can't just be sitting around playing video games for, you know, five hours a day. Can't we, though? <laughs> But can't we? Yeah. I mean, you could if you didn't want, if you, look, if you didn't have a relationship, if you didn't have uh, well, other responsibilities or, 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 or okay. a job, you know, okay. then yeah, you probably could get away with playing video games 12 hours a day. I you think know? I could, t- if I turn my back on all those things, okay, it's got to be nuclear. I've got to fire the wife, fire the boss, <laughs> right? Drop out of sc- <laughs> drop drop out out school. Drop out of school. That's very yeah. important. I want, I want to sit down with a budget and see how long I could play video games until I either uh, starved to death or ran out of money. Dude, okay, so there's this crazy story that I heard from Review Tech USA. Um, apparently, there's this kid. It's I think it's in the Philippines. I want to say it's in the Philippines. I might be wrong, but it's one of the one of the Asian uh, countries out there. Um, and uh, there's this kid who's 13 and he spends all of his time at these internet cafes, which are really popular out there. And this particular kid will seriously sit in this internet cafe. Cause apparently they're 24 hours, apparently um, for 48 hours straight playing video games. It's so no. bad. It's so bad that his mother, it, I guess it was on their like local news station or whatever. And uh, his, his own mother comes in to feed him. To hand feed this kid who's just completely immersed in this video game for 48 hours straight. That's insane. Didn't, isn't that like the South Park? Like, did she bring a bucket? Uh, <laughs> Dude, that's what exactly what I thought. Right? That, that, that episode of South Park where they're all playing World of Warcraft and, and Cartman's just this fat blob. Yeah. He's like, Mom! This bathroom. is the real... Yeah, this is the real thing. Yeah, that was the real. That was the. That's the real thing. Uh, yeah, that that's the worst case of video game addiction I've ever heard of. That's really funny though. <laughs> you kind of got to admit though. A little but bit. seriously, no? if it, but wouldn't your mother or, or father like if you were playing your video games for, God, ten hours? Let's just say ten hours straight, and you never ha- didn't have a uh, any signs of stopping. Don't you think your parents would? pull you from the video game kicking and screaming and like ground you physically somehow i don't know like i don't know maybe it just sucks so much the rest of the kid's life i don't know i don't know it makes sense to me shane because we're normal people (laughs) right it makes sense to you and me uh but it's not like i have any filipino children to try it out on so (laughs) this this is true uh so what games you've been playing recently with the time that you have Obviously okay, not for 48 have, have hours. Have you heard but. of a game? Have you heard of a game called Return of the Obra Dinn? Do you know what that is? Because if you don't, I need to tell you. And it's it's really, really cool. 
Okay, there was this game. No it was a, a, a lot of lists of like best game of 2018 had this game, Return of the Oberdin. So, and they, they kept saying like, you know, innovation, it's super creative and it's not like anything else you've ever played. You just have to try it, right? Uh, so it's made by the same guy that made Papers, Please, which is another like completely different than anything you, else you've ever played kind of game. Um, but the way it works is you're on this ship and uh, everybody has died on this ship and you have to figure out what their, how they died and what their names were. And the only tool you have to do this, you have like a, a magic like compass that if you visit a dead body, it will show you like a freeze frame, a three dimensional freeze frame view of their death, their actual moment when their like soul left their body. And so you go from like dead body to dead body to like kind of finding them. Some of them aren't there. And certainly no one ever, as they're dying, says like, I, Benedict Johnson, have died (laughs) now in the presence of my friends, Timothy and James. It's not like that. So you have to like use all these different clues and it's a big like puzzle that you kind of like have to unravel the whole way through. Really, really cool. That's like a very cool modern version of Clue. It, it's cool. Yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah, it is. And it's like, I, I like those like escape room kind of games and stuff like that. But this was like a little different. I mean, you have to, you have to like really, really go in there and figure things out. You know, this guy's got like a tattoo on his arm yeah. that comes up again later. And everybody has, even though the, the graphics aren't like stunning, amazing, everybody's like got a distinctive face and features. So you have to match them up to this like old school piratey sketch that someone <laughs> draws of the entire crew. And so you have to identify, okay, this is so-and-so and this is how he, de- you know, this is what happened to him. And there's a bunch of like effed up stuff that happened on that boat too. I mean, it's, it's Dude, like, that's cool. It is. It's really, really crazy. It's really, really cool. So if they, if they change like two things in that game, I would give it like a 10 out of 10. But like it, I said, it's nothing I've ever played before has, has been like it. That's awesome. Like that's what I really liked about LA Noir. you know, the play, the role of a detective and trying to figure out all these clues. I mean, probably not to that extent, but like they did a really good job in like getting the feeling of being this detective in the thirties, you know, or the after world war two. Yeah, and it seems like in a time of like, uh, oh, look, there's another um, Battle Royale game. Let's make one, only add this one thing, and everything else would be exactly the same. I like that, that, you know, there's some innovation in terms of like, well, no one's ever tried this before. Why not? Let's just do it and see what happens. I love stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, well, that kind of leads into our first subject that I wanted to talk to you about today. Uh for, okay, so I've been kind of sad lately when it when it comes to the gaming uh, industry. Okay, and not because, and not because it's had a lack of games in the in the last year. Okay, in the last year, if anything could be said about 2018 in, in terms of gaming, is that single player games, heavy narrative driven, super triple A narrative driven games, are certainly not dead, and they certainly are just getting more and more incredible. God of War, I just finished Spider-Man, and god damn it, that freaking game is so freaking fun. I've never played a superhero game and had so much fun playing as a superhero, because usually superhero games kind of suck, besides yes. the Arkham games. Like, I can only think of the Arkham Batman games that it's, you know... And Superman 64, obviously. <laughs> that was of one of the great classics. Of, of course. Classic. Where you can be a damaged, any Superman game where you can be damaged by normal bullets is just <laughs> good. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I, I was just... I, 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 man, and then Red Dead Redemption 2. Oh, my God. I, I can't believe... When I was playing the game, I was like, I can't believe I'm actually playing a game like this with so much attention to detail, like literally I didn't have any glitches, none whatsoever. Um, the, 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 the nuance, the, 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 after missions, you have this moment where you're all just in camp and you're all, your only goal is just to hang out with your friends and every single line of dialogue is different. And it's so much attention to detail and it was just, it's just incredible. But the reason why I'm sad, I, I would love a simulation where I had friends. I, <laughs> <laughs> well, play some Red Red Redemption That really too. be an improvement over my real life. Okay, yeah. Okay, I'll check it out. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's it's fantastic. Um, 
but why I'm sad okay. is that my two favorite companies have fallen so far off the deep end that I don't know if there's ever, I don't know if there's going to be a chance for them to climb out of this mess. One is Fallout 76, Bethesda. Oh my God. Oh, I thought you were talking about browsers and bang bus, <laughs> uh, but we can come back to those and talk about we'll the ones you to wanted those. to talk about. Yeah. yeah. We're, talk, we're talking about video games right now. We'll talk okay. about that in the next episode. Okay. Um, uh, Bethesda. Yeah, Bethesda just, did you buy did, Okay. Let me ask no. you this. Did you buy fallout 76? No, I wasn't going to buy it anyway. Cause I, again, I'm a, a strictly single player experience narrative driven dude because again okay. i have limited time to play video games that's what i like that's what i love those are the games i'm interested in you I, you dabble in the online world so you you can that's this is why i wanted to get your opinion on what i'm thinking what i'm feeling about i, I dabble yes yeah I dabble. um uh you know bethesda has just gone downhill and then anthem Bioware's latest game just was fully released, I guess. They had a staggered release, apparently. And both of these games had the idea of chasing the live service kind of Destiny, Fortnite kind of thing. Shoot and loot kind of stuff. Okay. And here I am thinking to myself, number one, Bethesda, your things are Fallout and Skyrim. You make those games, even the ones that critically haven't been the best like you don't like fallout 4 i love fallout no. 4 i thought it was oh i didn't i don't I mean like i didn't mind it i i i have played it several times so that means i i rather enjoy the game i think i think we just came up with what our next video will be about because i could probably talk for three hours on how much fallout 4 sucks and you're <laughs> more than welcome to chime in and try, <laughs> Look, and try to defend it i'm but not I didn't saying see any <laughs> anything that like fallout 76 everybody was like oh man it's boring and stuff like that and i was like uh that they carried that over <laughs> from that <laughs> other game that everyone loved for some reason that well, was super boring th the reason why it was an interesting storyline i in in the the branching paths and the you know like classic western rpg kind of stuff that's the reason why people buy those games that's why like, look elder scrolls put western rpg on the map the witcher 3 came out and said I see ya, but we're gonna do this. <laughs> I see ya, we're gonna make it awesome. And uh, and they did. And so, anyway, so Anthem comes out in a staggered release, which is, I, I just, and it doesn't really, it doesn't get good reviews. Mm -hmm. It's I think it's got a 60 on Metacritic right now, a 4.5 on the user score or something. The lowest rated Bioware game or EA game that's been released. Um... And it's sad. It's sad because Bioware created Knights of Old Republic. They created Baldur's Gate. Oh, they yeah. created they created freaking Jade Empire. Oh my god, great game that no one talks about, but Jade Empire is also a fucking fantastic game. Do you think okay, this may not I don't want to get if we get off topic with this and you don't want to, please tell me, but some people say like why are we loyal to companies when say like there's probably very few people that are working at Bioware that worked on Baldur's Gate 2, right? Like you have that same idea with like a football That's team. That's a good point. Five years later, it's all new people, but you're still a fan of the football team, but you're That's, not really a fan of those yeah. Super Bowl winning football team. You're a fan of like these new guys that aren't. That's, so I don't know. Like That's a very good point. I, yeah. I wish there was like an ideal that was so good that we could be like, you know what? We're Bioware. We have to. But like the people that thought that may have, may have kind of been phased out. If that yeah. makes any sense. Yeah. And again, that's another reason why I'm sad because I just want them to keep creating brilliant games. Like the, you know, the original dragon age. Oh my God. In, in, incredible, incredible game, incredible single player experience, branching pathways, great role playing game of fantastic pave the way for CD project red to come in. And it's like, again, I see you, I'm inspired, but we're going to make it better. We're going to do, we're going to improve on the things that could be improved on. And they did. Um, yeah, I love it so, when that happens. I love it when somebody trusts another studio with their, like, I guess child, you know, yeah. Uh, and I, I think one of the, you know, every now and then I still go back, go back and play like Doom 2016 because it was such a success 
on every level with something that shouldn't have been like everybody should have like thought of it with the same broken nostalgia that we think of like new Disney movies. And we're just like, why would they bother? Why would they, you know, (laughs) what are you going to make that's new out of doom? And they just did an absolutely brilliant job. So I know it's possible. And that's what makes me all the more upset because I know like uh, it's possible to exceed my expectations, but (laughs) most people don't, (laughs) I guess. And it, but, and it, 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 it makes me sad too. It does make me sad. And so like, yeah, it makes me sad that these, both, both of these companies who tried to chase the destiny sort of, uh, map just failed miserably. And what's probably going to happen, what's probably going to happen is the big wigs, the people in the suits, all the investors are going to look at this company and be like, well, you failed at something. You really, uh, your first time doing something out of the box. Well, guess what? We're going to pull the plug, especially with Bioware. Ever since Mass Effect Andromeda, their stock has plummeted. Well, not plummeted, but just slowly, just like, yes. Uh, and then, oh, we're going to, we're going to make Anthem. Oh yeah. Let's put all our cards in this thing we've never done before. And let's hope it sticks. And it, it obviously at this point didn't. Now it's a live service and they can prove on it over time. But EA has a reputation of, you know what? If you're not successful right out of the gate, boom, you're cut. See you bye. You know? Um, and Dragon Age 4, we're not going to let you touch that with your Mass, Mass Effect Andromeda dirtied hands. You know? We're going to just cut and run. We're going to concentrate on FIFA 2021. Uh, yeah, that's, it, I, I agree that it's sad. And I think, I think it's, uh, you know, as you were talking about how, what a great year it was for certain games, you know, coming out of certain studios. Uh, I, I mean, of the series we've talked about, I feel like God of War, I'm trying to remember if God of War is more recent than Red Dead Redemption series. I think it is. Like it or is. whatever, Red Dead Revolver. I think God well, of War g- came out the beginning of the year. Th- those set pieces. And this is why I really, I like, I, I want to get, my, my wife wants to get a PS4 because our PS3 controller broke. You can't buy a new one and she doesn't want to stand up to change the channel. I want to get a <laughs> PS4 because of God of War 4. That they're doing that like, it's like a movie, but it's a game. And it's really, you know, it's like a, and and God of War was just such a, a, a could do no wrong set piece of like, f- f- you know, fight people, solve a puzzle, fight people, solve a puzzle, do really cool like effects with this, you know, two D three D interplay. Uh, they could, I I feel like they could have just kept churning out games forever that were that formula. But yeah. the fact that they like tried something else says a lot about Santa Monica Studios mm-hmm. or you know, again, whoever they are now, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> So, uh, like, I, I, you know, we talk about all those, and then I wonder, like, it, is our theme today, is the question we're going to ask today, you know, is single player, like, a viable, uh, is it going to survive? And I look at games like that and Spider Man and everything else and just think, like, well, uh, yeah, <laughs> even if, even if it's not my favorite studios that put out the cool games, like, somebody's going to. Yeah. Right. I, well, I hope so because it takes a lot of money to do that. You know, it takes a lot of money to create a game like, and a lot of like a prohibitively trust. large amount. Yes. Yeah, yeah. A lot of trust in all these investors. And the, and the, that's the, that's the major freaking problem is that investors get scared. If, if, you know, you have this grand idea, like I could imagine that the guy who created, who had this idea for this new direction for God of War, I bet you he was scared to death in every single meeting he was in with all those investors and all the big wigs that were like, <laughs> He's like, let's make it like the new tomb Raider. And they were like, <laughs> what? <laughs> you know the last of us and they were like what (laughs) the last of us that's only a one-time thing we can't continue to pile on microtransactions onto things like that that's the new wave of the future and i need to get a new bentley and a new yacht damn it oh yeah and it's it's uh have you ever seen that there's a really good interview with frank zappa where he talks for it's about five minutes long it's pretty easy to find on youtube uh and he talks about the old school um record record producers versus the new school. And he said the older guys were actually better, easy to work with because they didn't know anything about music at all. Like they were just like, I don't know if you say it sounds good, I guess that's fine. So they (laughs) said, we're going to, we're going to, and I mean, Frank Zappa is obviously like on the more innovative, you know, side. And so they're they're throwing money at these, (laughs) they're throwing (laughs) money at these like chance artists 
and wondering, you know, and they say, you know, everybody try and whoever makes it will make it. Whoever makes this money will keep making money. That's fine. But he said then the, the new crop, the younger guys become A&R reps and then record producers. And they say, we know what good music sounds like. That's like, yeah. that's the difference is they, they have in their minds already this kind of box that well, good they, music they is started, in. They started trying to build a formula. You know, they're like, yeah. okay, yeah. Uh, I just watched a uh, Queen, uh, uh, Bohemian Rhapsody. Great movie. Mm-hmm. It's fin- fucking fantastic. Great movie. A lot of people think it's like, it's not true to how Freddie Mercury was. I don't care. It was a great movie. Great story. It, yeah. And, you know, it's, it's great. Um, but it, it there's this moment where, you know, they're trying to say, we want Bohemian Rhapsody to be the, the, the number, the hit, the next single. And Bohemian Rhapsody is <gasps> six minutes long. Oh, yeah, no. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they, they gave him a hard time. They're like, hey, you know, it's three minutes. It's That's three not minutes. That's song is. Yeah. You know, yeah. you got to do three minutes. Let's try. What was the other single that they wanted to do instead? Killer um, Queen or something? It wasn't. That was bef- that was after Killer Queen. So okay. anyway, uh, but it's sort of the same thing where, you know, you'll have a guy like, who says, look, I want to so, well, take... These are the rules, okay? Yeah. You can't break the rules. They're rules. Yeah. Yeah, these, uh, you know, God of War director comes out and says, hey, I want to take God of War in this direction. I have this grand plan. It's going to be it's gonna be risky, but if we pull it off, it's going to be one of the best games that's ever been made. I'm sure a lot of directors say that. <laughs> but in his case, it was right. You know, when that game came out, everyone was like, holy shit. Like, people who don't even play video games. It was on the Joe Rogan podcast. He was like, I guess young Jamie or someone showed him, hey, have you seen God of War? And Joe was like, no, I don't play video games anymore, bro. And then they showed, like, all these, showed just cutscenes of God of War. And Joe was like, holy shit, this is, this is, like, a, this is incredible. That's you how know? you know. Like, when people that don't play video games jump onto something. Like, I, I don't know anyone that doesn't know who Fortnite is like what Fortnite is. And that includes like my grandparents and parents and they haven't, they think the, they think that Nintendo is the only thing that's been a console, like anything that they would see, even this computer, they'd be like, Oh, Hey, it's your Nintendo. Right. So <laughs> that's how, you know, you you've made it as a company. If every video game system after your system, they just say that's your Nintendo, right? Maybe so. <laughs> and I feel like maybe there's, maybe there might be more of that than there used to be in terms of like, Back in the day, it was like non-video game. Like, I, I wonder if we could track like what non-video gamers know about video games and see if they. I, I mean, I I feel like there's fewer non-video gamers now, to begin with, uh, but like mm-hmm. there's also more knowledge that is leaked, right? That is like <laughs> leaked out of the nerd balloon and <laughs> seeped into to into the real world. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's... video games aren't just about Mario and Peach, right? There's no. like a whole there's a whole pantheon no, man. You, you can of tell, newcomers. You can tell fantastic, great stories uh, via video games. It's even better because now you're living vicariously through the character, or you can create your own character and live out your own story. You what, where which, friends come to your campground, right? Yeah. Right? <laughs> exactly. The ultimate exactly. fantasy. Um, so, I'm again, my... So, to, to back on topic, I, I just... I'm worried... I'm worried that more and more suits people who have the real power and the real money and the real direction where they want their company to go are going to just consistently stamp out these risk taking ventures such as God of war or hell Spider-Man, you know, like how often it's very rare that you get a superhero game that is incredible. Batman Arkham showed the way they're like, Hey, this is how you make a freaking superhero game. And even then, you know, you got some, you know, superhero games that came after that, that tried to sort of emulate it, but didn't have enough resources or didn't, you know, didn't take care of it or whatever. And it came out and it flopped, whatever. And so I imagine having the same idea as like, hey, let's make a Spider-Man game that's open world, that's got sort of a, like a role playing game element to it, heavy story driven. And we're going to f- basically make it another Marvel movie. And that's exactly how it feels. The whole game feels like you're playing a Spider-Man Marvel movie at the, really? at the freaking theater. It's incredible. Um, uh, but again, pitching that, you know, you got to be really good at your pitch. You think as time goes by, it's going to be harder and harder 
uh, to get the you know to get those innovative messages across right uh because i think the people in the suits will go oh Fortnite, that we can we can we can uh we can monetize that forever forever if it (laughs) if it they just want to find cows they want to find cows that they can milk until it's like that's your worry right is that they're just gonna all they're gonna see from spider-man you know is dollar signs is like uh uh uh, you know, what's the one element that we can copy and stick into our game and that be good. Right. And, and I want to, so, I, d- I do want to caution and say, that's not always a bad thing necessarily. Like sometimes there's kind of like iterative, uh, competition and like all of a sudden somebody figures out that like games are more fun in, in multiplayer when the MO and the, uh, weapons are in different places. So you can't camp. Right. And then everybody does mm-hmm. it from then on. It's almost like those rules you talked about are still being written through these, uh, through these games that do make it in these games that do, but it's, I think it's easy to, to look at the crap and think like we, the future could either have more good things or more crap, <laughs> and more <laughs> crap seems more likely if that makes any sense. But I did and have, uh, uh yeah. in, you know, in preparation for this, I I was thinking of just what like uh, some s- s- some game some things that single player games have that multiplayer games don't, and why I think maybe if you're sad, maybe I can cheer you up by telling you some reasons why I think the single player games will never die, uh, and there'll always be some there will always be a demand for something good. There may not always be something good every single year. But there will always be a demand for something good. Demand for, these for something good. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that's that's the, that's a great point because you're right. Um, I know I'm not the only one. I'm there's there's a lot of people out there. They're like, what? You know, they look at Anthem and like, why are you even doing this? Why are you even doing a game a live service anyway? Just make the, no, the next freaking Dragon Age. Try to jump back on the horse. Mass Effect Andromeda. Yeah, that was a dud. Just you know, learn from your mistakes and you know go. Uh, go for broke make make dragon age 4 better than the the better than your competition which is going to be freaking cyberpunk 2077 you know you gotta and again Cyber, cd project red they're like dude we got this we i mean Shane, if you get your hopes up this. too high i mean someday they're gonna pull a bioware they're gonna pull a blizzard That's they're gonna pull that is a, you know that is true because i'll be owned by ea at this point i mean <clears throat> and again, I think, uh, you know, right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, again, I think that's an inevitability with, uh, with any company, you know, you grow and grow and grow and grow. And all of a sudden you start, you know, you, you're surrounding yourself with all these investors that are pouring money into you. And now all these different people who are giving you money to make your next game. Now they have a say financially. And if they don't like your idea, they'll go, no, I'm not going to give you my hundred million dollars. I'm not going to do it because I don't like that idea. What you should do instead is try to monetize it somehow so you can pay the investors back. <laughs> you know, and God, that just fucking that. It's I bad. Feel yeah, bad. it is bad. That's, that's very bad. Um, but, you know, what's funny. Um, what's well, not it's not funny. But um, do you know who Amy Hennig is? Amy Hennig is the co-creator of Uncharted. Oh, and okay. uh, she was just at a Dice Summit in Las Vegas recently and she had a, actually had a conversation about single player games. And you know, if anyone's played Uncharted, which I haven't, but I Oh, they're good, you know, man. All they're Yeah, see, all my friends are like, dude, that you got to play Uncharted. That was a very early entry into the movie that's a video game kind of like role. right. And it's really they're and really cool. And so another thing that made me sad was EA canned effectively um, a single player narrative driven experience um, that was being created by Amy Hennig. So people were saying, oh, badass, freaking Uncharted style freaking Star Wars game. Are you kidding me? Sign me up. And, you know, that ha- that was announced like what's five years ago, something like that. And people were excited and we didn't hear much from it. And then EA just pulled the plug. Just like nah, not not gonna not want to do it, um, and she I think she retired after after that point, and then I think I think they completely shut the studio down after that the studio that was actually making the game, again yes. adding to my fear that you know, again I've been screaming at EA it's like guys you have Star Wars 
You, you have the license for fucking Star Wars. The, one of the best franchise, if not the best franchise filled with all these different things that you could do. Like the, all this story in the, in the, the universe, like there's so many things and you just can't freaking figure it out. You can't figure it out. You just can't like, what's the, what's the problem? Anyway, um, so she was at a dice summit and, uh, she said, uh, I'm going to read this real quick. Um, Okay, uh, she said, uh, uh, contrary to what you may think, Hennig doesn't believe single-player games are going to go extinct. They're just evolving. Mm, evolving. Uh, I don't think, quote, I don't think anybody would say single-player is dead. Look at the current crop of games. It's just a harder and harder proposition, kind of what we've been talking about. What this means in practice is that the sort of game that the original Uncharted was can exist today. The first Uncharted was a short, single-player-only game with a story campaign. Once you finished the story, there wasn't much else for, for you to do. Now you have a lot of hours of gameplay. Eight would never cut it. Usually some sort of online mode. And of course, you see where things are pushing toward live services and battle royale and games as a service. All of those things... I don't know the word I'm looking for, but they play less nicely with story. They're less conducive to traditional storytelling. That has a that has a shape and an arc and a destination, an end. A game that is a live service that continues does not. Uncharted 2 and 3 both featured online multiplayer modes. Though these modes were first viewed as tacked on, they endured and cultivated a fan base that kept them going for years post-launch. They may never have reached mainstream audience in the way a multiplayer sh shooter would, but their ex existence justified the investment that went into single-player. <clears throat> now, the veteran writer and game director also pointed that games like God of War, Spider-Man, and even Red Dead Redemption 2 are all much longer than the single-player games she used to make. Yes, you can look at Spider-Man and Red Dead and God of War, and they're deeply narrative, but they're also really long. There's also an understanding that a lot of people may never finish it. They'll only play the first part of the game. As a writer, going into it with that understanding, as Hennig puts it, makes me crazy as a storyteller. The length and complexity and the layers that are in these games now, submissions, skill trees, all these things that are great, I'm not saying we shouldn't have them, but it makes it harder but it makes it harder. It's harder to tell a single player narrative focused game. That All is, right. that's a, uh, that's a very good point. And I think on mm -hmm. almost every level, the introduction of multiplayer, uh, takes away from that kind of like storyline. Or if you picture like when you're in town and you're waiting and somebody like you can tell, you can look out and tell who the computer NPCs are because all the humans are like jumping in place jumping mm -hmm. and like standing yeah. on top of people and then they go on a roof or something <laughs> and just blah, 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 like really like a bunch of toddlers. Okay. It's not yeah. exactly helping your immersion <laughs> of the game at all. And, the, uh, uh, there's, this is why I say like the, there's only one chosen one, right? I mean, <laughs> uh, like Star Wars <laughs> galaxies and fallout 76, they both kind of wanted people to be NPCs, but people don't want to be NPCs. They don't want to like, no, see, they want to go and do the one, the fun thing instead of do the like standing around or like bartering <laughs> or any kind of like nonsense like that. And uh, even the Elder, Scroll, Elder Scrolls Online had the problem of like when you were there and you were actually in line like behind like three people to turn in a quest. And so the old man is like, you and you alone are the only one that can save us from the darkness. And then the next person comes up, you and you alone are the only <laughs> I mean, it. Do you see what I'm saying about how it like, yeah, takes away from like, really kind of like sex, you know, just like Ugh, I gotta what I gotta share this experience, you know. Uh, and yeah. she, I, I, I also, I, I like what she said about how like, you know, sometimes now the length of a game will kind of more justify it. But I, I don't like ranking games based on how long they take to complete because some games. 
you know, take 300 hours and they go by just like that because they're so fun. And some games are like yeah. a one-time shot. You can beat it in like two nights. I, I actually like games that are short because I have stuff to do, right? That's also yeah. important. I can't like right. get to the mid game where they, they padded this length and they made you cross this huge field every time you need to get somewhere. I can't, you know, ugh. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I also, I also really like, um, and we've talked this, this about this before that like you and me don't we you and me play games so that we can win and have that feeling of beating overcoming something uh, and mm-hmm. the way matchmaking is now is a lot different than it was when we were kids. When we were kids, we could play Halo, and like I was like, I wasn't good, good, but I was good enough that I consistently beat up on all these other noobs, and that was fun to me. Was going online yeah. and killing people. Well, matchmaking now is so perfect. Like the algorithms they use make it so that you will lose exactly fifty percent of your matches. You're always going to get seated with someone that's as good as you. So you're always going to lose 50% of the time. Right. And I'm like, you know, what's more fun than losing 50% of the time <laughs> when I play single player and I lose 0% of the time. Right. <laughs> like that's part of it for me. And that's even there. There's, there are uh, a huge amount of Starcraft players. I, I can't remember the exact number. I, I don't remember if it was like more than half that never touch like Starcraft we always think of as a multiplayer game but they played it just for the single player campaign they were done they had no reason to hop onto like a really stress filled experience of playing online and having you know having a, a, a something tell you how good you are at this you know beyond you know beating somebody there was a, a, a the 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 biggest i think hurdle though and i think she talked a little bit about this uh uh, and how video games as a service, right? Video games as a service as opposed to video games as a product. People, those investors, yeah. those suits look and they say, if a video game is a product, we can only charge people money for it one time. And once they have it, right. they own all of it, right? And that's what I like is owning yeah. all of it. But I want to kind of walk you through like how expensive multiplayer gaming really is because you have to buy the game, obviously. You pay the subscription mm-hmm. fee, so it doesn't matter what it is, if it's WoW, if it's Xbox Live, whatever. You play that monthly. You have to have fast, reliable internet, okay? Otherwise, people are going to yell yep. at you the whole time for, for dropping <laughs> out. If your little brother wants to play, you have to buy a controller, and those are like 70 bucks now, right? Yep. Uh, and yep. so you get all this stuff, you spend all this money, you finally sit down and you're ready to play. Oh, whoops, that was the game that was popular last year. Everybody's moved on to this <laughs> other game, and so you need to buy a new system and a new game. And no, if you want to play the old game, too bad. Because not only is no one there, no one's supporting it anymore. Like they don't have a server that's running the game anymore. And right. the, so the, the ironic thing is like the more money I'm spending to share this game with other people, the less ownership I feel in, in what I have. Like I wanted, I wanted to buy the game and play it, but now all of my fun is determined by actions from other people. Does that make sense? Yeah. That's why I don't, I, I, I don't think sense. that the system that, that we have of video games as a service is fair. Like you, when you buy FIFA, you're not really buying it. You're renting it for a year because then the next FIFA is going to come out and you got to buy that one. Right. Yeah. I mean, so, you know, that kind of like concept of ownership that like, here's some other, there's other but, pieces of art where I get to view them as many times as I want. I have a movie. I can watch it as many times as I want, but all of a sudden you say I should yeah. pay to rent this like experience I don't know. So is there, so I get what, what, uh, what you're touching on is something that I wanted to ask you. Is there a way to convince the suits, the investors, the people that want to get more into this live service? Because that, you know, if you're charging people monthly for a game, that's better than charging people one time for a game, obviously. So is there a way to convince people that this risk of a strong narrative driven single player experience is not as risky as the multiplayer, you know, live service kind of thing. Is there a way? Yes. Now, I don't know if that's true. I, I, you know, I said earlier that there will always be, there will always be a demand for everything I described is something that people want and people like the game that they can own and they can have and they can, you know, go back to. I love playing old games, you know, just for the fun of it. Uh, Yeah. That's what people want, Right. You have a demand 
and you have some people that aren't making games and therefore aren't making money. So the supply follows like they're, they're kind of like two blades of a pair of scissors that's cutting a piece of paper. Like that's, that's mm. kind of the pull. And I, I, I mean, you know, people have been saying the video that single player video games are going to die for like 20 years. <laughs> And the, that's, that's the true. Single player <laughs> games are extinct, but except for the ones that came out this year because they were all good, right? Uh, yeah, right. But, so right. I, I, what I see happening is like they're gonna try to make a bunch of crappy s- subscription only stuff. People aren't gonna buy it, or a few people are gonna buy it, but not a lot. And then they're gonna make something good, right? Think of how many people bought fallout 76 versus how many people bought skyrim even years after the game came out because everybody just couldn't shut up about how amazing it was and it is i mean people continue to buy i have i think i have three different i bought three different copies xbox 360 version the ps4 version and oh no i want i would get a nintendo switch version if i had a switch dude i would i would totally buy it shane i don't even have a vr (laughs) headset and i have skyrim (laughs) vr i own it okay (laughs) That's, wow, that's great. Yeah, that's the level. Of Dude, commitment. have you tried VR? Ever? I'm saving up to get. I'm, I'm going to get an Oculus Rift here pretty soon. This is kind of off subject, okay. but I was just at my buddy Soren's house and I tried VR for the first time. Did it change your life? It changed my life. <laughs> like it really did. And PS and then PSVR is apparently not the good version. You know, it's just kind of it's still kind of blocky and it's not. But still, I was so immersed. I was like, I'm really impressed by how my entire body felt like I was in this world. I just really want to be able to, I, I like the uh, virtual desktop. So it's like you're in an office, but you can make the screen as big as you want. Cause I, I like how I need, I think I need more <coughs> screens. I don't have enough screens. Uh, yeah. So I, so I really want, um, <laughs> I really want to tack those on anyway. So I'll get an Oculus Rift. I'll let you know how it goes, but I'll definitely play Skyrim VR. Uh, that's Dude, definitely happening. Let me know how. Let me know how that goes, because yeah. that that that's something that I would definitely do for sure. Um, I, you know, that's uh, and uh, I don't know. I, we've talked about it you know, for a good while. Um, you know, and I have hope. I do have hope. At the end of the day, I do have hope that, like you said, there's always going to be a demand for good single player experiences, like Red Dead Redemption Two. That's not a game. And it's, it's, it's a cliche, I know. You know, this those movies, it's like, this is not a movie. It's an experience. Yeah. You know, but seriously, Red Dead Redemption 2 is not a video game. It's not. It's a fucking experience. Okay. If you want to experience how to live life as a fucking cowboy, play that game. Play that game. It's in, it, it's, it's just, I, I, I can't, I can't, it's, the words can't even come out my mouth, like how incredible that game is. Same with Spider-Man. I can't wait to you know? I can't wait to role play a bald guy with a beard, and <laughs> and play God of War. I'm really hey, maybe stoked. you are. If you, maybe we're all simulations. So someone's playing you right now. There's Simulation actually well, theory, there, there's a uh, some theories on that, Shane. I'm glad you brought that up, and I'm I know you are too right now. But that uh, uh, like we can make you know we can we ourselves can make a simulation, but it's impossible f- for us to make a simulation of like things that know that we're like that we exist, right? Like we can't simulate our own environment. We don't have the technology to make like atomic level, you know, perfection when it comes to like graphics or anything like that. Does it make sense? Right. So what that means is that we will never develop the technology to know if we ourselves are in a simulation. So we're either not in one or we'll never know if we are. That kind of sucks. But again, maybe that's good. You know, maybe that's, you don't want to know that you're a simulation or not. You know, it's like, it's like knowing when you're going to die. It's like, do you really want to know when you're going to die? Like if some like old man seer, like with the, the, with the hood and the beard and he comes out and he's like, Evan McKee, September 27th. You and your heart, yeah. was, <laughs> yeah. you and you your heart are the one that will see you. us in this darkness. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> you will experience darkness on the on the eve of 21st of September yeah. 2038. Yeah. You know. I've been, I've, been, I've been, we're getting back into Game of Thrones so I'm like <laughs> are you dude I, I'm really excited. I was I was so stoked that I read all the books and 
there's a lot going on. Okay. Like I have like <laughs> new predictions that are based on the books because if you read the books now, you're like, Oh man, we totally should have seen that coming based on what he says, what she says right here, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so let's talk about that for a second. Okay. I actually have been really getting really deep into this theory that Bran is the Night's King. What are your thoughts? Oh, here we go with the theory about Bran being the Night King. I, I take it you don't agree with that theory. Well, do you? What is part of that theory that he is act like now as wheelchair Bran? Is he acting maliciously? Like he does he have like uh, designs against? Um, like, do you think that he's going to kill the Night King, or do you think like? Uh, well, I think like, the whole what do you theory think that revolves means? around... Like, okay, fine, both... But there's two people named Bran, and so they made this theory <laughs> that they're the same <laughs> Bran. Wow. There's actually a ton of, like... for Not only are there a crap ton of characters in Game of Thrones, they actually recycle some of the names to make it more complicated. So, <laughs> so okay, time yeah, traveling right, Night okay. King, there he is, being the Night King, whoop de doo What does that mean? Like, what... Well, right. That they brings can up, finish like, what's the, the show motivation? without answering that question. Is what I mean, right? Yeah, I guess they could. Um, yeah, and so that's an interesting theory because the whole theory is like once he wargs into, well, he's going to that dream state, right? He's in that dream state and he's seeing how the 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 Night King was created, and he's tied up. You know, he's tied up to the to the tree, and they they, they create the the Night King. Okay. You know, the the first White Walker, whatever, and. Uh, Bran was actually in his body as he's being turned into the Night King. And so that creates... So people think that Bran is, has been the Night King this entire time because he went back in time and... I don't know. I think that's the theory. I think that's the theory. It's, it's fascinating. There is. But then again, that brings up what's the motivation? What's the motivation behind... There's got to be a reasoning behind the Night King. And if Bran is the Night King, what's the motivation for destroying all of the universe? I I would maybe he's trying to get back at them for throwing him out the window. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to see like more. this whole I'll, time. I just wanted to get to Jamie Lannister. I'll, I'll say this: I don't know if I'll follow you all the way to Bran is the Night King, and I'll also say who knows? You might be right. Maybe when he saw himself as the Night King in the crow, he was confused because he saw the crow and himself. It was like he was looking at himself in the mirror. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, to be fair, I, I don't believe in that theory. I don't want to believe in that theory because I want the I want the fucking good guys to win at least once. There's a you no, know that's not, in no, Game that's of Thrones. not gonna happen, Shane. I'm sorry. That's not <laughs> that's not gonna happen. We're gonna have at least three more good guys die, and then some fifteen more disappointments before the scene we're all waiting for, which is when they'll be stuck inside the throne room and they'll have to break down Gimli, the, the Gimli, Grindy, Gimli. <laughs> Gertie, whatever the guy, the robot guy will break down <laughs> the throne into swords and they'll all fight their way out using a sword from the actual iron throne. Uh, that's Evan's prediction. Patent pending, patent pending, patent pending. Okay. <laughs> you, that has a, that's a bad ass Wow, that's the, a badass The swords prediction. that make the throne are a Chekhov's gun, okay? They have not gone off yet, and they will. By the end of the story, they will. That's my... Do you th so, man, I didn't even think about all the swords in the throne. Like, they all could be gr dragon glass. I... Oh, I didn't even think about that. I kind of thought they were... Yeah. I, I don't... You're going to think I'm crazy for thinking this. I kind of thought they were iron <laughs> for some reason. <laughs> Shane... <laughs> But maybe they're a mixture of iron maybe and dragon glass. Maybe just like Bran know. and the Night King are the same thing. Maybe iron and dragon glass are the same thing. And that's what we're going to find yeah. out. And the Iron Throne. Uh, yeah, I, I, guess I, I, also, forgot that, I forgot it was called that. I have a almost there. a certainty that uh, Cersei and Jaime will die at the same time. Um, that's one thing that is like a motif in the book that keeps coming up. We were born at the same time. We're going to die at the same time. I feel like that's... I feel like there's too much foreshadowing for that not to happen. Um, that doesn't yeah, mean I know the nature kind of, of the death. poetic for them. It, 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 it would. It would. Because I, I don't see... I don't. If anything, I don't see a continuation of the story if one of them isn't... If one of them is dead but the other's alive, they wouldn't really be themselves. Yeah. Does that make sense? Do you think... Do you think Jamie will... There's... I, I remember hearing this theory that Jamie is seeing how dangerous Cersei is. 
and there's going to become a point in the next season or in the books or whatever that Jamie is going to kill her to, uh, you know, only is, is, if he is also going to kills kill himself. her himself. I really think that like his, his seeing and knowing what, Je- what Cersei is. I mean, she, she's a, uh, uh, the funny thing to me about Cersei, and this is kind of revealed in the book, is that she's always been this evil. It's just that she hasn't always had this much power. So now she gets yeah. to be just even more, you know, blatantly evil. And I, I know he's seen it and I know he sees it, but I also know that he loves her. And I think if if right. he kills her, it's going to it's gonna kill him at the same time. He's going to hug her right. and then they're going to separate and there's going to be like a spot of blood and they're both going to have killed themselves and it's going to be poetic. Right. I think I yeah, feel like so that like, is like a poetic end to them. Y- yeah, because there's you know if there's a chance where the person that you love the most cannot be redeemed, like they've gone way too far. You know, you yourself have no reason for living. There was plus there there was kind of that angle of retributive violence, and I think I sympathized more with the show Cersei than with book Cersei because at sometimes like show Cersei has all her kids taken away one by one, and Cersei is very much. The reason, the thing I like so much about her as a villain is because she's a very believable, like, mom that asks to speak to the manager in the, you know, you, you, you said what to my son? I'm going to get you fired. I'm going to get you sit like, that's like a really believable type of character. Somebody who's like obsessed with their children that way. So some of what she does to me is justified because she like, like, I mean, you know, killing the sand snakes, like she, they deserved what happened to them. I feel like. I mean, oh, yeah. Cersei's all about like retributive justice. I don't think, you know, she's got like mad schemes now that she wants to take over everything that I don't think are going to happen. I, I think like, I think in the early parts of the show, the these White Walkers were coming, but nobody believed in them. So it was like a greater danger because everybody was fighting in and amongst themselves when really there was this more important thing that was happening. Now that so many people right. know about the Night Walkers, like at this point, like 95% of the characters know about the night walkers and Cersei's still trying to play games behind the back. Like it's not, <laughs> yeah. it's not as believable. Cause it's like, you're it's, just stupid for doing this. Yeah. Uh, you know? Yeah. That's, that's a very good point. Like if you, if yeah. Plus they have, yeah. they have the strongest, most OP character in the show by far is Bran. Uh, well, and he's on hey, the good on, team. Though. Let me, let me push back on this, that seriously thing, that seriously point you just made. Well, and again, I'm I'm bringing up another fictional TV show, of course. But like to take Walking Dead for instance. Yes, all of these zombies are running around killing everybody, but we need to protect ourselves from these other humans because humans are worse. Do you see what I'm saying? Like the whole show revolves around for like entire seasons. That's why the show sucks now is because it's all about like fighting all these other humans. Like, Oh, by the way, there are all these zombies killing everybody. And you know, the whole entire world is in this apocalyptic state, but fuck that. I'm going to kill, you know, the guy in front of me because he's the most immediate danger to my life. Supposedly. I, 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 I feel like I don't agree that that would happen. They have a, a, <laughs> You know, I also don't agree with, you know, you know how I feel about zombie movies and stuff, <laughs> but I feel like when there's only like five living people on earth, their lives become more valuable, not less. So that's, true. you don't automatically yeah, yeah. St- turn into an evil person and start killing people. Real are, we, life are, people. are we talking about real, are we talking about real life? Or are we talking about fictional real life? <laughs> no. Okay. That's, that's are a good not- point. But like, you, you remember how like, uh, uh, you remember when Watchmen, like Ozymandias is, oh, whoops. Okay. Spoiler for Watchmen. Uh, <laughs> Ozymandias' big master plan is he's going to simulate an alien invasion and every country in the world is going to unite against Night. that alien invasion. So his, right. his, real, his real plan is world peace. He accomplishes it through killing people, but his real plan is world peace. And in the book that right. actually, that was, that was kind of believable to me. Cause I know that human beings are like really lazy when it comes to labeling people. And if we had like a whole other group, whether it's zombies, whether it's white walkers, that all of a sudden we need to band together. We would look at each other and say, you know what? Put a pin in that hatred that we have. We're going to come back right. to that as soon as these guys are dead. But until well, then, then, yeah, that's that's a point that that's a point that I made with my last podcast with CC. It's like you know, and and I heard it from Joe Rogan, and Joe Rogan brought up this point where, you know, during nine eleven, you know, when that happened, you know, all of that shit that everyone was like hating on each other for all this hate that we had, all these little little stupid little fights, 
that didn't matter anymore. Con- like, conservatives, it was completely and liberals erased. United against Muslims. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> You're What's absolutely it? right, Shane. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I I'm not going to go no, that far. I, I know what you <laughs> but mean. But you know what that I'm saying? Was the like, terrorist. Whoever, whatever terrorist did this, you know, we're a lot less safe than we thought we were. And so we need to, you know, come, come together as Americans and, you know, concentrate on something, an, another threat, this bigger threat than... So, so, anyway. so maybe b- bitter <laughs> infighting is like a luxury we have when we're safe, Right. Ooh, yeah, that's yes, that's a that's a that's a very good point. That you, yeah, like I it, wasn't that what killed Rome? You know, it wasn't like you know, it wasn't the fact that all these other you know threats were coming in from the outside because Rome was like, we got this pretty under control. But there was civil war inside the the city, which destabilized all of Rome. And then oh, oh, here comes the Mongolians. Oh, great. Is it the Mongolians? I don't know who was coming in, but it was like all these other... <laughs> a terrible history, everybody. But I do know that Rome was it destabilized was Sal, from within. That's who it was. <laughs> was it? General Sal, yeah, and his chicken. Uh, okay. <laughs> don't look at me like that. I'm, I know my history. Is that true? I don't no, know. No, Shane. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know who it was. The that fall of Rome is famous because Rome. Rome fell from the inside. Okay. They yeah, could not uh, hang yeah. on to their uh, republic. Like they couldn't hang on to their government. Yeah. They switch, you know, they had to, they had bitter infighting. And so people study the fall of Rome now because they wonder if we have, if there is the same any thing. kind of like a uh, form of government. And at this point, like, you know, the, the American government is like the oldest constitution, the oldest, like, this is like a 200 plus year experiment that we've tried, but the slightest, you know, is it, is it possible to have a peaceful government endure? Because the Pax Romana ended when Rome did, and that was it. Everybody went back to doing what they were doing. So, uh, there, there's actually people, and I, I know that there's people in government positions who believe that, economic prosperity in America is based on the military industrial complex, which means if, if we ever don't have a war or all of our wars stop, we're going to get, things are going to get worse for Americans, right? Things are going to get noticeably better for Afghanistan <laughs> and Iraq, <laughs> but things are going to get worse for Americans. And so they, there's like a, you know, there's always that shadowy hooded figure. Maybe you've seen them before that shadowy hooded figure that reaches out his claw and says, nudge Illuminati in this direction so that we can all, so that there can always be a war to keep our kind of like engine running. If that makes sense. The Illuminati. Yes. That's the the shadowy hooded figure. (laughs) Oh, what? what? You got cut off Shane. Oh, (laughs) (laughs) yeah. Good shot from a sniper. Okay. One more thing about game of Thrones. I wanted to ask. Okay. Hit me. Who do you think? So Hodor. there's this. Okay, Hodor. Hodor. I haven't got to that episode yet. We're watching from season six to season seven again. And so we haven't got to the Hodor episode yet. But you have seen them but, all. But uh, I have seen them all. I'm all cut up. Okay, We're just I, getting I, excited. I really for hope there's April. more. Like, th- there's, a, there's this effect that for the longest time, Bran was only ever going back in time and not influencing anything. Sometimes it was like he would say something and the person would turn. But other than that, right, he's always going back in time and influencing things. And finally, the one time that he does go back in time and influence something with Hodor, it ruins Hodor. Like, that's the cost right. of... But, again, is it because is it because Bran did that, or is it because he did that anyway? And like, like, the, like the Blood Raven had said, the ink is dry. That, like, yeah, that's why I want Whatever more, happens, happens. That's why I want more you know? stuff like that to happen. More kind of like right. trying to meddle <clears throat> and, 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 so, and a terrible great cost brought on, not, not by brand, but by nature itself, saying this, is, this can't happen, what's happening. Right. And so Hodor gets struck you know, with, with his affliction because it couldn't happen. But it happened. Right. Yeah, it happened. Um... So, uh, question. You had a question about Game of Thrones. The question, yeah. My question was, who do you think Azor ha- Ahai is? Do you think it's Jon Snow, or do you think it's Daenerys Targaryen, or do you think it's a a combination of both? Do you think it's something else that's sort of a metaphor? I will um, say, because if it's anyone, th- it might not be anyone, but if it's anyone, it is likely Daenerys. 
But the reason I say it might not be anyone is because they, they spent a long time in the book talking about the comet. And there was, there was a big comet, right? And every, it, was so, it was so big, everybody in the whole world saw this comet as it was happening. And they go from chapter to chapter, each perspective to perspective, each person thinks the comet is about them, right? And even like, uh, there was this whole long thing with like Stannis and the Red Woman where you thought the gods had a lot of play and a lot of power over what was happening. But in the end, they too get mocked and their and prophecies don't come true and their things don't mm-hmm. happen. So I, I don't put a lot of stock in Azor Ahai as a prophecy because Stannis did and it, and it ended badly. Right. Right. I mean, it, it may be yeah. like that they're interpreting it differently. I, I, I don't know. There's a lot of like religions, but at the same time, religion is kind of being removed from the equation to, we can't really count on, a hundred percent one of these gods coming through and saving everything. And so the theory is Rhaegar Targaryen, the guy who supposedly took Lyanna Stark, but turns out they actually were lovers. Um, right. Rhaegar. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. You're right. Um, yeah. Okay. So apparently he was obsessed with that prophecy. And so the theory is because he was obsessed with that prophecy, that's the reason why he went after Lyanna Stark is because in the prophecy, it is a Stark and the, 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 the prophet that will, the prophet, the, the Azor Ahai will be a, a, a combination of Stark blood and Targaryen blood. And so Rhaegar was already betrothed to somebody else, but because he was obsessed with the prophecy, he was like, I need, you know, me and a Stark girl need to make Azora high. And so he took her. She she took him apparently and so that's you th- the whole so you reason. think it's Jon Snow? I don't know. I I don't know because you could be right. You could be right. It's just like it's just a prophecy. Cuz Game of Thrones does that to you. They're like they, they they want you to believe that this big grand prophecy will come true and the white walkers will be destroyed by the man who holds the flaming sword. It doesn't end like that in Game of Thrones. It's like or Jon Snow uh, and Daenerys and all your good friends will be killed on the red wedding part 2. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Both of those are equally possible. I feel <laughs> And that's, yeah, I mean, it's, it's that Game of Thrones that we love and hate at the same time. But I, I, I put more stock in Daenerys because she's the one that it really seems like the gods favor. Everybody else, like a lot of really crappy things happen to them. But Daenerys has like battles where it's a million to one odds that she not only wins, she wins like really handily. In fact, she's never lost. In, unless you count like being sold to... Drago and raped a bunch of times, lost. Yeah. Which she ended up like in love with him. I, I mean, that's like a really ideal that's... couple if, in some people's <laughs> minds. <laughs> I mean, I, she ended up like really loving him. That's so no. I mean, like that, even that is like a was a form of winning that she like appreciated that she went. She actually had like the option to not to, to kind of get out of that situation, and she didn't. She took it on the chin, and she went with it, and yeah. made the no. She didn't just make the most of it. She made everything of it. Right. Yeah. She, so yeah, like she ended up having dragons. I, I feel so, like yeah, she's I think the, that's a win. She's the best. She's the most like good guy. Good guy. I guess to me in the show. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, I, I'm with you on there. So I don't know. And I, they're starting. So what's interesting about what I, from what I remember of season seven is Daenerys is talking is starting to take this dark turn. Well, she's just she's doing a bunch to, of wrong things. Right. Yeah. She just makes a bunch of wrong decisions that are stupid. Yeah. <laughs> not listening to, not listening to Tyrion mm-hmm. because how can you not listen to Tyrion? He knows every, like, he's smart. He's, he's so smart. <laughs> it's incredibly smart. Um, Tyrion actually is the catalyst for a whole bunch of things. Um, I also, I was watching this video on the good old YouTube about Jon Snow's, you know, a hero sort of path and how Tyrion was actually responsible in a lot of ways for his like hero path because there's this there's this moment when Jon Snow first goes to the wall and everyone hates him because he's so good at combat and he hates them back because they he's like he's like you know they're just jealous of me I'm I'm amazing I'm 
you know, I, I, I remember I'm, this, I'm yeah. this level. I remember what you're talking about. And Tyrion is also there and he's having a conversation with Jon Snow. And this is right after Jon Snow like beats up a bunch of, a bunch of his future friends, but then sort of like rivals. <clears throat> and he says that same thing. Jon Snow says, you know, they hate me because they're jealous because I'm better than them. And Tyrion starts to go down the line. It's like, do you think any of those boys have ever held a sword for longer than 10 minutes? Do you think they've had, they had the same uh, background as you being trained by a great swordsman? Do you know? And then he goes down the lines like Pip was, uh, he was put out of his house ten at ten years old, and the other guy was abused, and the other guy was uh, you know wrongfully accused for something, and was asked to go to the wall or lose his hand. You know, and he goes down the line, and then Jon Snow kind of has this epiphany. He's like, oh. They are my brothers. They also have terrible lives. Just like, you know, I, I'm also tormented because it's Jon Snow. <laughs> I'm always brooding <laughs> about something. Plenty, there have been and many so, times in the show, just like Daenerys, where you really thought things were going to end badly for Jon Snow. I don't just mean his death either. I mean, like, everybody has disagreed with everything that he's done, and he's had to, like, <laughs> talk them into it. And always been right, and they still disagree with them. I mean, I know as soon yeah. as they go back, they're going to devote a whole episode of like, "Hey, why did you bend the knee to the queen?" And then he's going to have to give a speech and everything like that. <laughs> but he, I mean, he he's come through a lot too. So you know, there's some commendable people in the show. What what a great what a great um the you know it's because the whole time we thought Rob was going to be like the hero. You know, we thought it was going to be Ned. Yeah. Then we thought it was going to be Rob, and now we think it's Jon Snow. But Jon Snow, again, it's like, you know, you brought him back from the dead. So when you bring back someone from the dead... They better not die again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, if they do, it has to be for, like, this great cause. No, they can't die again. <laughs> no? That's like a new rule. Like, well, who would ever... And, I mean, uh, you know, we're like, who would ever kill a main character? And they're like, ah, uh, we would. And then we're like, who would ever kill him and then bring him back? <laughs> we would. Uh, we would. Who would ever kill him, bring him back, and then kill him again? No one, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe we would. We'll see. Yeah. yeah. Um, and okay, I do have a question because you read the books. What is the, okay? What's the deal with the freaking Lord of Light? What is what's the deal and with M- Melisandre? Like, what's the deal? Like, what she? Uh, <sighs> what do you mean? Like, what's the deal with them? They have you know. Well, uh, uh, she okay, told Stannis so apparently that he was pe- Azor High, right? And yeah. she converted all of his, everybody that was close to him converted willingly to being <laughs> Lord of Light worshippers. And they practice ritual sacrifice by burning people, uh, which is no more or less barbaric than any of the other religions in Game of Thrones. But like there's, you know, there's, there's not that many characters that do what they're doing because of gods. Did, have I told you about the three, uh, like the the riddle that the spider says in the books, like uh, mm-hmm. I don't think I I I don't think they bring this up in the show, but it's kind of interesting because he says like there's three people and a swordsman, and the first guy says I in the name I, I basically says I'm the king, so you have to kill the other two with your sword, and the second guy says I have all the money, so I'll give you a bunch of money to kill the other two with your sword. And the third guy says, I am, you know, the gods have told me to command you to kill the other two with the sword. So the riddle is, who does the guy kill? And uh, the spider uses, there's not like a right answer, but the spider uses it as a point to say, really, it's the man with the sword, even though he doesn't think that he has the power like just like the people at large don't think that they have the power over the king or over gods or right. over money like they're they're the ones they're the ones swinging the sword and they're the ones killing people right so like yeah. it, he he uses it to make a point about like perceived power and how it is and throughout the throughout the book you can see characters that are motivated only by money some that are mm. motivated only by duty to the king right like to a very strict set of their, which right. is why Cha- it's chaotic chaotic good yeah and it, well and then it gets complicated because <laughs> there's more than one king so now there's more than one allegiance and like you know a lot of people will say that, that's a very like i guess medieval thing that we don't understand as much today is doing something because you have an allegiance to like 
a, a, you know, a family or not, not your family. Right. But like you've sworn right. to this family and so you have to do, you know, for them, people aren't acting yeah. on their own, like of individual accounts, right. They're doing that. And there's a few, there's very few characters, you know, like the sparrow, the high sparrow is one of them. Mm -hmm. People that are doing what they do like for God, I guess. So Melisandre is the one that I, in my opinion, like exhibits the most power and they actually get away with a, a really a cool, like shape shifting trick that they didn't do in the show. Uh, but she has like, uh, she has actual powers. She's not just yeah. faking it, I guess. Yeah. Well, yeah, there's this, uh, there's this moment in the show where she's revealed to be an old lady. Yeah. It's pretty, she's all it's depressed pretty gross, because yeah. Yeah, and then and the, but because I didn't notice this at first, but then I, when I rewatched it, she took off a necklace, and when she took off that necklace, next scene, she's an old lady, and I was like, oh, there's something with that necklace that she has. So it's like That's an amulet of some kind. Yeah, an amulet. It maybe I don't know. Uh, she just good. Uh, but my question was though, like, okay, so people are able to revive people who died by calling the Lord of light. Some people, sometimes like even the guy, even the red priest couldn't do it every time, but he could keep doing it to the one guy, Beric Dondarrion or whatever. Yeah. Beric Dondarrion. wasn't he revived like 12 different times so, or yeah, something ridiculous. But every time he tried with that guy, it did work. And he said a lot of other times it didn't work. So even he didn't understand his own power or why he had it or what the kind of purpose was. So is it because these particular characters who are revived haven't, you know, if they died, they haven't lived out their destiny, the thing that needs to happen in order for the universe to be set right? I don't... Or is it just, uh, you know, it, with certain people, they're able to be revived? I, I don't know. Uh, I do think that uh, there's a theory that when the hound was held against the flames as a boy, uh, he saw in the flames how the mountain would die and has feared the flames ever since, not because it burned him, but because he has, he has the power to see in the flames, just like, uh, you know, certain other characters do. So that, you know, we've seen that that's like a conduit by which certain things are happening. But I, I, I don't know if I want to put that much faith in, the gods because the show is about the characters and their own reactions to the gods right and sometimes yeah. there's sometimes even the supernatural characters are flat wrong the red woman was flat wrong about stannis mm -hmm. and the uh, yeah. uh the guy that brought i think the red priest didn't he die north of the wall um uh, i think he did i think when they tried to get the white bring it back yeah so Beric made it yeah. out but not him right um so, uh, one thing I'm really excited about is the battle between the mountain and the hound. <laughs> uh, <laughs> do you think that's going to happen, or do you think something they're going to? They're going to. Really, I think they brought. I think they brought the hound. I think they brought the mountain back so that it could happen, and then they brought the hound back so that it could happen. Once you come back, you, bro, you are going <laughs> all the way. That's what I really liked about the last couple seasons. Is that like. It, it's it's not because you know for the first couple seasons things kind of went a little slow everything's like okay when well, these things are happening here but season six season seven they can boom, all boom, of a sudden boom, they boom. can fast travel like they unlock yeah. that ability and they they like, started treating matter. it just like that girl said at your convention they started treating it like a story that could end instead of a story you were subscribing to they yeah. started treating like a like a, a story that could end and would end in the next season and so I don't care oh, how many spinoffs get off. Like this is the real story to me, is what's dude, happening. I'm excited. Now. I know it's going to be I, good. I'm I, I'm excited, and I'm excited that excited and sad at the same time because I just wish it was one of those things that just kept on going. But obviously that's unrealistic. When, yeah, I you wish it could keep on going until they jump the shark and just absolutely turn into <laughs> Walking Dead. What's wrong with you? <laughs> yeah, right. Again, unrealistic. <laughs> Uh, uh, I've got some uh, video game would you rather's for you, Shane. Uh, this is a just right, for we'll fun do, thing. Uh, yeah, let's let's end on a uh, on a happy. This note is how here. we'll end on a happy note. Okay, so what the yeah. only rule is you're not allowed to think, but you gotta you gotta blurt it out. You're not allowed to think about your answers. Is that okay? Ooh, that's that's tough. I don't I don't like to not think. You can talk out <laughs> it, as long as you start talking through your thought process. Uh, okay, I feel like that'd be okay. I'm not gonna. Okay. <laughs> how strict do you think I'm gonna make this? Shane? <laughs> okay 
So, are you ready? I'm ready. I'm okay. ready. Okay. Number one, would you rather game on a ten thousand dollar display or a ten thousand dollar surround sound system? Display. Display. Okay. Very mm-hmm. interesting. You, I think you want that VR back, probably, right? Yeah. Yeah. You want to go yeah, back into three D? Ever since then, you've been like, oh, that's the <laughs> oh, real fuck. world. Get me out of this, <laughs> dude. Do you remember three D TVs and how everyone was like, three D TVs are going to be the next big thing, and that was. Two, I remember. Two years I remember like, Virtual this is Boy. Stupid. I had a virtual boy. They made 14 <laughs> games for it and then stopped. I was pretty bummed about that. I was, you know, should I buy an N64 or a virtual boy? Mm, I bought a virtual boy. Uh, and then you, you would use it, but everything was red. So when you took it off, yeah. like your eyes were red for like the next three <laughs> Your eyes were bleeding <laughs> from what was happening to People them. People would get bad. headaches after 30 minutes of use. It was rough. Yeah. It was really rough. Okay, yeah. here's number two. You're playing an RPG. Okay. Would you rather the combat be turn-based or real-time? Real time. Real time. Okay. Okay. Yeah. In spite of the it fact that some done. of your favorite RPGs do have turn-based combat. I don't hate turn-based. Okay. I don't. Um, again, if the action is fun, like, again, fun is key. Fun is king. Fun is key. And action-based have the more... Uh, 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 you're, you're able to have more fun with an action-based system if you do it right. Okay. If you do it wrong, however, it's not fun. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, then no. I'll take turn base. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, would you rather play an escort mission for the tenth time or watch an unskippable cutscene for the tenth time? Unskippable? No, I do. You must really cutscene. hate. I... You must really hate the escort missions. Well, it uh, it depends. If it's a Spider-Man <laughs> escort mission, I'll do that. I'll do because it's fun to just run around. There's no such thing as a but, fun escort mission, Shane. Let's just be fair. They should have made an <laughs> amendment to the Constitution a long time ago that escort missions in games were illegal because there's never been a good one, right? I mean, let's just they every yeah, every always person that you're on. escorting should be like Elizabeth from Bioshock, where she's just invincible. <laughs> she throws you ammo, and we're good to go. Yeah, yeah. Okay, it just it just pads the <laughs> yeah. Okay, you're stuck in a room with one console. Would you rather be a PS1 or an N64? PS1. Okay, okay. Now we're getting to the real answers, Shane. We're getting to the real <laughs> meat of the I issue. Feel like, I feel like I'm doing some sort of Rorschach test. This will tell, like, <laughs> when I'm done, I'll be able to show you, and it'll be like, this is you. Uh, number five, would you rather have... This is weapons. Okay, would you rather have the portal gun from Portal... Or a life-size Buster Sword from Final Fantasy VII that's light enough for you to pick up. Uh, Buster Sword, but and uh, but full disclosure, I've never played Portal, so you know what a portal gun is, though, right? I do. I, I I'm sort of aware of what a portal gun is, but still, you know dude, that if I a portal a... gun was real, we would have like transportation and shipping costs would be zero. Your commute would be zero. Everyone can just throw your trash and piss into one hole, and it would come out above a giant <laughs> toilet. In Ohio, I f- <laughs> you know that, right? I, bro, freaking Final Fantasy VII Buster <laughs> Just- Sword. I have one. I have one that's actually a real one. It's right behind me. Are you me. serious? <laughs> I do have a real dude, one. Dude, I made this list without even. <laughs> oh man, are you? I have a real one. Dude, I should have known. I thought it was. It's not. <laughs> it's covering. It's, it's being covered partially by my thing. So I, I like. Uh, do you have a real portal gun? Let's just go. No, I don't have a real portal gun. No, I we went to Gallenberg this one time and uh You went to China you know, Bazaar. In Gallenberg, there's Yeah, I went to the World China Bazaar and there was a fucking Buster Sword chilling there and I was like Actually I didn't buy it, but my but Kyle Kyle bought it for me. He was like, Here, it's your present. I promise you I would I promise you I did not see that when I came up with these questions. <laughs> that is insane. See that I thought that that question was a setup. No, like I thought, I thought you it knew was that like, like just looking not looking at it, looking at it, but just looking at it, it kinda looks like a little filing cabinet piece maybe with like a thing. So I had never I, I'd never even thought about that. I'm so sorry that I'm not observant enough to see something that's obviously like a treasured possession. But wow, <laughs> no. that's amazing. Yeah, okay, it's, it's it's legit. Yeah. Okay, so it's, you can keep that yeah. instead of the poor gun. Okay, <laughs> you got you're playing a game. You got an enemy base up ahead. Are you going in okay. picking them off one by one with stealth, or are you going in guns blazing? Stealth. Stealth. Okay. Yeah, okay. I would go in stealth if the stealth is fun. Well, I, I mean. Are you, if you're, if stealth fails, are you going to keep trying stealth until it succeeds? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cause if stealth I, I fails for me, that. which usually happens immediately, I just go ahead and kill everyone <laughs> just cause. cause yeah. I did angry. that with spider. I, 
I did that with Spider Man, and I did that with um, Skyrim. Like I would go in, you know, creep along the caves with my bow, and be like, "All right." You can get away with a lot. Headshot. Yeah, you can get away with a lot in Skyrim if you do that. Yeah. But there's some place, some things like Far Cry Three was really good, like stealth. But I knew, like, I was like, no, no guns. I want to, I want to make this work. Like, I have to make this work. And they would give you a big bonus if it worked. Like, if you killed everybody without using stealth, that was like a, an achievement, and they would give you money for doing that. So it was cool. Or without breaking right stealth. On. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Your favorite old classics? It's getting HD remake. Are you hoping it's Chrono Trigger or Nice of the Old Republic? Chrono Trigger. Oh yeah, for sure. Dude, they could, could make. Yeah. You, have you you've seen the two and a half D? Uh, uh, new Zelda, right? Like they're doing, yeah. they're redoing Link's Awakening. They could do that with Chrono yeah. Trigger, and it would be awesome. Dude, they could totally do that with Chrono Trigger, and I'd buy it in a heartbeat. Yeah, I'd buy it in a heartbeat. Okay, would you rather everyone in the world talk like the voice actors from Dynasty Warriors, <laughs> saying things like "I fight in the name of justice," or <laughs> would you rather them be voice actors from Shenmue, saying things like "Do you want an arm wrestle?" <laughs> <laughs> I think, ooh, that's a good one. Uh, I'll go with Dynasty Warriors. Dynasty Warriors. You'd hear a lot of the same things, sort of, I feel like. I feel like people would come yeah. up to you off the street, and they would look at you, and they would go, I've defeated an enemy officer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think I would go with Dynasty Warriors. God, that game, those games are terrible, but so fun at the same time. They're a blast. I mean, they're just so, they're, they're just a blast. a blast. I really like to, sw- I really like to swing a sword in a game and hit eight people. That's my favorite part <laughs> of Dynasty Warriors. Not, not eight people, 20. <laughs> just. I, I, you play for five minutes and then you look down at the corner and your kill count is like 600 and you're like, yeah, this is an awesome game. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, this is Would great. you rather play Minesweeper with an Xbox controller or Mortal Kombat with a Rock Band drum set? <laughs> Mortal Kombat with a Rock Band drum set. You know, you played that one time. I, play, I, I was at my friend's house and we played. Uh, uh, there was a bunch of people there and we had a Soul Calibur tournament, but we, he he put down like DDR dance pads that were the controls. So you had to That's... like like you've <laughs> never played Soul Calibur until you can like kick with your foot and he swings his sword on the screen and it's <laughs> it's awesome now add in a add in a drinking game on top of that and you got yourself a party i thought this was a family show <laughs> so i took out that element <laughs> but that doesn't mean it wasn't there <laughs> okay would you rather have unlimited carry weight logic from first person shooters or have the laws and crime work like they do in grand theft auto but dying only costs a couple thousand dollars Oh, wait, repeat that again. Okay, we're doing we're doing video game logic. Okay? okay, so you can have carry weight logic, right? Where you can just carry as much as you want from first person shooters, and you have like a pack full of weapons and ammo, or you can have laws and crime work like in Grand Theft Auto. So you could kill a cop oh, and man. and hide or change your clothes. <laughs> you can ch- <laughs> you can change your shirt, and then they would leave you alone. But dying would only cost maybe three or four thousand dollars. Okay, I would I would take I would take option number two. Really? Please, yeah, I would take option number two. Like, what would I do with a limited carry weight? I feel like you would. Well, you carry things, Shane. You have <laughs> you just have a bunch <laughs> of things as much as you wanted. No, anytime you want, I, it'd be like but, that bag in so Harry Potter. Like, anytime you wanted something, you could just push a button and whoop. Here it is. Yeah, but I'd Whoop, have to. I'd have to get the thing first. You don't have a lot of with, things with, Gra- <laughs> with Grand Theft. <laughs> with Grand Theft Auto, I can just like a- attempt something. Even if I die, I can spend three thousand dollars and be revived. Well, che- uh, right now, cheap healthcare is a fantasy, but <laughs> um, rampant crime is not. <laughs> okay, cal- uh, calculating, calculating what type of person you are. Okay, so that you're. This game is going to come out, and it's going to be your ideal game, okay? It's going to have real-time combat. It's going to have stealth. Uh, it's going to be... <laughs> uh, you're going to play it with the Rock Band drum set controller. I hope that's cool. <laughs> and then finally, it's going to be the first game in many years that's come out for the PlayStation 1. So, congratulations, Shane. We finally found the perfect game for you. That's, I'm there. That's what our answers have told us. This was fun. I am there. Yeah, I'm that was really more fun. like we goofy stuff again. like this, and we'll do we'll we'll work it in when we can. Does that sound cool? Yeah. 
That sounds great. Well, dude, it was it was a good time talking to you, man. It was another episode in the books. It feels good. Yeah, I'm really glad I got my. Uh, I almost said Lord of the Rings. I'm really glad I got my Game of Thrones predictions on tape because uh, yes. I know the posterity is going to prove me correct <laughs> on every front. So it'll have a date and everything said by Evan McKee at this date. I'm stoked. What if you sit on this episode? You only bring it out after Game of Thrones is over. I'll be so oh, I'll be so <laughs> no. mad. I sit on it for another <laughs> month and like ah, I don't feel like. I don't feel like uploading it. Eh, whatever. Uh, all right, dude. Well, until next time, my friend, I hope everyone enjoyed the conversation. You can follow uh, Mr. McKee at, uh, was it, yeah, at 3 McKee it's cool. on Instagram. It's cool. You don't, don't follow me. I <laughs> don't follow <laughs> he, does, he, he doesn't, he doesn't do, he doesn't do the social media stuff. I've taken a break from I've, the social I've rolled media. a lot of it really back. Posted. I've really rolled a lot of it back. I took Facebook on my phone. I have like no activity on a lot of things. And I think that's good. I, it hasn't made me a better person, but it's made me act like I'm a better person in front of everyone else. So <laughs> That's just as good. Yeah, right. <laughs> I think it is. All right. Cool, man. Cool. Until next time.